perfect. All right. Um, so maybe we'll with about two more minutes before getting started. But um, so we all are on the same page. Um, what we're going to be talking about for the next 45 minutes to an hour is um, Hubert. Um, and about like a month back, we did a paper reading on wave 2 vec 2 and um, um, Hubert sort of builds on top of, of wave 2 vec 2.0 and, um, um, you know, um, adds like better um, spoken language understanding, uh, so to speak. And um, we'll essentially be like, reading the paper um for the next 45 to um 45 minutes to one hour um the session is supposed to be like as much uh discussion as possible the slides that you see on the screen are just like placeholders and essentially for all of us to just talk about um uh what's on the slide so feel free to like popcorn style anytime just like jump in and and be like hey what's what's happening here or or you know share your thoughts about what you uh, what you think about the paper itself um and um uh like throughout um the way we sort of go about it is is um the way that i've structured it is is that we'll first talk about the main motivation of the of the approach itself then we sort of um walk through the entire framework of hubert um and um then essentially work our way to the um uh, to the results and then like just just discuss how um things are um, currently and like what can be improved in the um, in the overall um, framework mentioned um, you know spoken about by um, the authors um, about Hubert. Um, does that sound fair enough? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Perfect. Cool. So I, I I think we're at like um, uh, five or five mark. So um, I think it's a it's a it's a good time to get started um, as well. Um, I'll just quickly share the link to the slides for those of you who are um, on phone and want to just look at the slides parallelly. So that will be Discord. Um, it's shared in the ML for audio study group. Perfect. Um, so, so, all right. So, so, um, one of the first things which I, um, um, which I kind of like the first observation that I had when I was reading through the keyword paper was, um, um, was was that they, they they pretty much use the overall design of wave 2 vec 2 uh, in itself and then they, they essentially change the way the model learns um speech um representation units right like so 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 the slus um in the sense um if we if we just quickly take a step back and and remember like how wave 2 vec 2 was wave 2 vec 2 had this like entire quantization uh, module which would um learn um these these spoken um um these speech representations uh and you know then sort of use those um later on for for different different downstream tasks right um and this was done via like a, a gumbel softmax which essentially takes like a continuous um um like a like a like a continuous variable and then like creates like discrete sort of chunks out of it right and like everything was essentially learned on the go um uh, and and th the reason why it worked uh, fantastically is um is because like the model um essentially has um like a access to quite a lot of pre-trained data so it can quite easily learn on the go but the reason why it's not that um, that suitable for a, for a lot of tasks is that just in like pre-training itself just the parameters of like gumbel um softmax is are like quite um quite nuanced uh, meaning that uh, they are they are very temperament and they need to be tuned um and and you know just a slight change in the parameters could result in like um the 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 model just not learning those uh, representations in the first place right and um that's where like hubert comes in um and um and and hubert essentially um provides an alternative approach 
to learn these um, representation units, right? So um, the three problems that the that the authors kind of like start off with is that um, uh, like the like, like the first one is that there are multiple sound units in each input utterance, right? So each each utterance can have can be like um, can be like multiple sound units plugged together, right? Um, and uh, because this is just like uh, the model is supposed to just learn from the audio itself or like some representation of the audio itself. Um, it means that there is also no like text or like some sort of lexicon available for the model to um, uh, learn with as well, right? So so the model just has access to raw audio waveforms um, and, and, and the model has to make sense of what those audio waveforms are um without the corresponding transcription of it um this makes the task like considerably difficult because um well now you don't have anything to map those audios to right um and uh, the the third problem is that uh, sound units have like variable length depending upon whichever language you're talking about even in like english itself um there's no such thing as like every 20 milliseconds would be uh would be say for example a new sound unit within a um, 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 within an audio waveform, right? So, um, so um, th these like sound units itself, they, they, there's no like one size fits all um, uh, kind of setup wherein like you can you can just like um, uh, take a snippet of the audio waveform itself and say that hey, this is a sound unit, right? And this corresponds to say the sound um, A or like B or whatever, right? So um, these are the th three key problems. Um, that that are there. Wave to wake 2.0 um, solves or like attempts to solve this. Uh, we are the whole quantization approach and, and 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 like having the the contrastive loss and the diversity loss um, in in its pre-training criteria. And Huber takes a slightly separate approach. Huber takes um, an approach which is more BERT-like. So um, it essentially um, uses the mass language modeling criteria to learn these um, speech representations um so i'm 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 just going to take a quick pause and see if if um, anyone has any any thoughts on the overarching um problem that uh, hubert is trying to solve or wave to vec 2.0 try to solve and like feel free to just like unmute yourself and and uh, share your thoughts All right. Um, well, it's all right. We can we can we, we can also share our thoughts later on as well. Um, no rush. I, I want to ask something oh. like a very sure. small thing. Sure. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a speech or audio expert, but I I always have this feeling like um, you know speech and audio is a domain where noise is noise and the diversity of the you know signal is more. Uh, compared to text, where text is more standardized, that is it also another challenge for um, the this mask the speech modeling. Right, perfect, uh, and and that's that's actually a brilliant uh, question. So um, uh, you're actually correct. Like in case of text, text is like really low dimensional, right? So text is just like actually it's just like um, one dimensional. So you just have some characters sort of um, placed in together with each other so it's it's like for a for a bird like model to actually understand the semantics it's um, it's actually quite easy if you if you throw enough um, um, you know text at it um, in case of audio um, there are like multiple things which matter so um, people like speak in different way um, generally right so like no two people have like the exact same way of pronouncing uh, like pronunciating um, each and every um phoneme so to speak right so um one of the things which uh, which is in which is an issue um largely is um when you when you train a uh, when you when you use like mass language modeling sort of a criteria for um uh, for these um uh, speech representational units um then these speech representational units would differ from like one audio file to the other right so what you 
um, what you seek from like either the quantization step or from the clustering step, which we will um, cover in a bit, is that they understand the broad patterns of these, um, you know, consonants or vowels that are being spoken at the at the moment and uh, uh, learn to distinguish between white noise, pauses, or or just noise in general, right? Um, but um, that is um, that is a very um, active um, you know area of research in itself. Um, another thing to like quickly point out over here is that the the recording equ equipment in itself also adds a lot of um, bias to the to the model itself. So for example, you can you can you can train a model which is which has just used your laptop's um, microphone or um, you know just just any microphone um, um, at all. And uh, when you try to test it out on a different microphone, it will, uh, you know, even if you say the same exact thing that that your training data has, and the same exact person says that, it could have different um, results altogether. So this is like just the just the noise itself, and uh, you know how the overall audio is constructed has like a, a major impact. Um, and and we're still like we're still like trying to um, get ahead of this and like trying to solve this. This is like. A very much active area of research. Thank I know, you. Yeah, it, I, I know it did not answer your question, but it, it was more of a rant slash explanation of, of what's happening. Uh, it was great. Thank you. You can go. Perfect. Um, so let's let's dig deep into like how this um, this entire clustering setup sort of worked, and um, you know how exactly did they learn these um, speech representational units, right? Um, so, so what they essentially did was they, um, from the audio that was input to the model, um, Hubert essentially uses like a k-means um, clustering algorithm to um, cluster these um, speech units into hundred or so clusters, right? Um, the the broad thought here is that um, uh, similar sounding um, spoken units or similar sounding snippets of the audio itself would um, cluster up together, right? Um, so you know you would have something um, um, you would have something um, like you know on the on the top right you'll have certain vowels on the top left you will have certain consonants and bottom right you will have something else and and, and so on and um, this could be like clustered on um, multiple different uh, criteria um, it could be based on the pitch or it could be based on like how um, uh, you know what is the duration of the entire um, spoken unit and and so on and so forth. But the idea is that you use something uh, as simple as k-means to cluster these together, um, and 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 then um, um, you know mask these from the model, and then like ask the model um, what kind of spoken uh, unit is it, right? And then like um, either either penalize the model if it's wrong, or you know uh, reward the model if it's if it's if it's if it's right. Um, not in like the not in the exact sense, but like essentially that's how the loss calculation is, um, and 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 you do this like iteratively um, through the through, through throughout the pre-training phase. Um, so, um, in the broadest sense, how this would look like is that you have the audio waveform, and then we have the CNN encoder, which essentially which 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 first downsamples the audio, um, and uh, you know then it takes 25 millisecond snippets of the audio, and those become become your spoken. Um, or, or like speech representational units, then um, you know, 50% of them are masked, um, and then um, they are they're essentially passed through um, uh, passed through the network, and uh, simultaneously on the side, there is also this um, this k-means based um, uh, acoustic unit discovery system, which um, performs the clustering on the side, and um, uh, you know gives you. Um, certain representational units, right? And then uh, um, the the model's task is to find what this unit is. Sorry, uh, to find what this unit is. Let me see if there is a yeah. Is to is is to find what this mask unit is. It does so by using like um, um, cross entropy loss, um, and and you know uh, we'll we'll get to the specifics in a bit. 
Um, but that's that's how the model essentially learns. So that's that's the overall pre-training criteria, which is that um, the model essentially has to find what is the correct um, representational unit for this masked um, speech unit. Um, cool. Before we uh, get too deep into the Hubert framework itself, does um, anyone want to chime in and share their thoughts on on what we've discussed so far? I just have a, a basic question, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the 20, you said 25 millisecond? Yeah. So that's from, and I'm no expert in learning, um, but coming in, so that waveform is just then dot split and then using that time of 25 milliseconds to split it. So it could potentially split it in between yeah. A word? Yes. Kind of? Is that, am I thinking about it? Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Exactly. So, because there is no, um, like, from uh, from the way, um, so first of all, I'm not sure if it's 25 milliseconds or if it's 20 milliseconds. It's it's one of those. Um, but the way um, this kind of works is um, that, we like, there is no actual way of, like, figuring out when a speech unit ends. Yeah. Right? Um, and, like, if, if there was an actual way, then we could just, um, you know, create a data set for it and and like we won't need any of this uh, pre-training step um, yeah. at all. Like we won't need clustering at all um, in that particular, uh, um, you know, setup. So because we don't have it, so um, so we, we, we just give the model copious amounts of uh, amounts of data or, or like audio. And uh, we hope that the model um, essentially learns through like these partial speech units. And and, and mm -hmm. even these like partial speech units would sort of cluster together because they will have similar, um, you know, uh, characteristics. Um, and and um, we'll sort of get to like how they are similar uh, in just like one second. Um, and, and, and then um, the similar ones sort of cluster together. And, and then you can say that, hey, this is, this is one, um, you know, unit a or, or like or, or all of these speech units belong to say the vowel uh, i or could be anything right and um, then like the model um, essentially takes these these clusters and uh, takes whatever representation it 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 has from the from the cnn um, encoder and uh, checks um, whether or not it is it is correct about um, the prediction of the mask right uh, so that's the that's the sort of like ten thousand feet view of what's happening here. Great, thank you. Perfect. Um, cool. So um, let's sort of dig a little bit deeper into the into the framework itself, right? So there are like two things that are that are happening simultaneously over here. So or or rather, there are like two steps that are um, that are. Um, um, happening here. So the model just takes the audio waveform as as an input, right? And 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 then it does like two things um, with it. So um, first of all, it takes the audio waveform and uh, directly sends it to the latent feature encoder, right? This latent feature encoder, um, I know it sounds kind of like, we, you know, kind of intimidating, but it's nothing but a convolutional network, right? So it's just multiple convolutional layers which are taking the audio waveform and uh, down sampling the audio wave from from say you know whatever sixteen thousand um, you know uh, rate to um, like it, it it down samples by three twenty uh, x but that's not really important but it it essentially down samples it and um, uh, creates these like small um, units out of these 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 units are nothing but the but the representation at the end of this. Um, latent feature encoder, right? So, um, what is the 20 millisecond representation? Like, let's assume this is a 100 millisecond uh, waveform. So, there would be like five, like Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5, like five sort of um, uh, outputs from the latent feature encoder. And these are then then sort of masked, right? So, so they're masked, 50% of them are masked. Um, and they then are passed through the context network right and then the the context network um uh, takes the representations or or like um takes these uh, mass representations and and um um 
wait hold on a sec let's let's uh, not talk about context network for a second um uh, let's just assume that we have like z1 to z5 um speech units from latent feature encoder right parallelly what's happening is that these these audio waveforms are then like transformed using uh transformed and are um and and, and we get their mfcc um representation um uh, from the waveform so we're so, so we convert the waveform into numerical MFCC representation, which is then um, sort of split into, uh, again, those 20 milliseconds or 25 millisecond chunks. And those are then passed through like K-means clustering. So um, the thing that you see over here. So the um, um, these these features are then passed through K-means clustering. And then um, they're given like some sort of like a hidden unit embedding, right? So, um, so all the... For example, like all of these are in like one cluster, all of these are in like another cluster, and so on and so forth. So these these then get like some sort of a unit embedding out of the um, out of the cluster. So those can be thought of as like cluster embeddings, right? And then these cluster embeddings are compared with the output from the um, from the transformer encoder um, from the context network over here, and um, uh, you know we we essentially predict um the the hidden unit at these mass locations right um and um, um the way like the way learning actually happens here is that if the model like like the loss is only calculated on the mass locations so not for all so uh, so the loss is only calculated for um these um um mass locations right so this does two things this one forces the the context network um to create like really strong representations for the unmasked um um for the unmasked uh, um audio or, or or like unmasked audio snippets um or like unmasked um snippets over here and um, also of course learn to um you know find the most closest um snippet that 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 belongs to these uh, particular um representations right so uh, and 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 this keeps on happening right so so like um we do like step 1 which is like we discover these these hidden units right um step 2 then we like predict the um the the targets at these mass uh, positions right and then we 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 keep doing this till the time we've, we've sort of um gone through the entire we've we've done like one entire pass over the entire data set so in the in the in, in the paper they pre-trained using the 960 hours libre speech data set um so like that's the entire pass on the 960 hour libre speech um data set so um just to sum up two things that are happening here we take the waveform it goes through the uh, feature encoder, right? And then we get um, our speech representational units on the side. Parallelly, we take the waveform, we convert it into um, into MFCC features, and those are used for clustering, um, which then gives us the hidden unit embeddings. And um, um, both of these, uh, like these hidden unit embeddings, are then used to predict um, what kind of target should there be for these masked positions um i'm gonna take a quick pause and see if if um there's there's any um if there are any points that anyone wants to add on over here Cool. I, I think if, if I'm I would probably ask a ask a question uh, or, or or like something which which did not really make sense to me or um, uh, something that I was I was, I was, I was kind of thinking um, in the paper they um, they sort of mention that uh, the way clustering works is like at first they use these MFCC features um, from the um, from the audio waveform itself right and then they use it for like k-means clustering. Um, at the at the first step right and then um after the first clustering step they sort of um lean into the 
intermediate representation from the context network itself to cluster further right so so um, essentially they 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 use the intermediate layer from the previous step of the transformer over here to cluster then um, there on so like the, the 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 bit that did not really make sense to me was like why use the mfcc features in the first place as the first step of um, of clustering when you can um, you know possibly take something like wave to wave to to um, to you know create um, or, or, or like create these spoken um, representational units. Um, if that question makes sense, I would I would love to have like a quick discussion on that. That's <clears throat> that's an interesting idea. So you're saying <clears throat> you could um. Like the first iteration, instead of using uh, these features, you would use a trained wave to vec model and and the like the quantized values that that model outputs. You would you would try and train this uh, yeah this network by yeah yeah and and I I mean so my my thought process over here is um is mostly like why why do we entire like why do we even need this entire step right because this is this just adds on to the the overall complexity like um why not just just start with like another like since um hubert like anyway sort of inherits so much from wave to wave 2 um in fact like the entire code base is pretty much the same um then like why not just 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 use the already used units from those uh, from the Quantize layer of wave to wave two um, to then like cluster. I, I one I think that those would be like much more um, uh, you know like like the overall signal in those embeddings would be would be so much more when compared to just like the ones uh, that you get from MFC, MFCC features. I guess that sort of defeats the purpose of of, of this different technique. Um... For the reasons you described before, like so, to do that, you have to have a wave to vec model that is trained, and in order to do that, you you have to fiddle with those um, the the Gumball softmax parameters and get that just right. Um, so, I guess if you is yeah, I guess if you if you want to try a whole new technique, the, this this approach with trying to bootstrap off of the MFCC sort of classical mm -hmm. uh, audio analysis approach makes sense but um i don't know I, I i that that makes me wonder like i i guess there's other not just wave to vec but like other audio models that could have useful representations that you could also and bootstrap off of in the first iteration but but then you you'd need to build off of their techniques which this seems to be like i guess a from the ground up different approach here yeah actually and 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 just to just to think of that um um one other point that you um like so um one reason why i um think that this this also might be a good approach is this is also language agnostic right so you don't need really need like a like mfcc features would be um kind of like mfcc features for like any language right so they, they're not language dependent whereas like a wave to wake model would be language dependent or or, or say any spoken language model or, or like spoken language understanding model would be language dependent at the end of the day uh, even if you take like the the multilingual models or whatnot they, they they still need to have enough information about a particular language um for um, for the model to um to to give you anywhere reasonable units whereas in this particular setup you can you can essentially do like cold start meaning that the model does not know anything and then through like first iteration you just use mfcc features and then um you you you, you hope that the model's learned enough about the the waveform and then sort of default to the context network as well yeah, that's true yeah i guess if if the wave to back model um was trained you know for a particular language and and reaches some you know particular performance <clears throat> level then maybe like maybe there's limitations there in using those representations um 
maybe like you can't get past whatever bias or, or uh, performance that is achieved um, at the beginning. And yeah, like just starting from scratch with some like less, more broad uh, audio features um, is useful. But yeah, I don't know. It, even so, like it would be really interesting to see if that technique pans out. Right. Yeah, no, uh, um, I agree. Um, 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 yeah, just just the whole like came in like um, like like the first step like once I've uh, once I read the like like, like for, the, for the first time when, when I read, um, read the wave two wave two uh, paper, I was like, oh my god, this is such a complicated process. But like when you read the Hubert uh, paper, then they're just like, yo, this is not at all uh, complicated. We just have like we're just doing like simple k-means clustering stuff. So you know. Um, that just made me sort of think about like the ways that you can even simplify this further, uh, which would be to just like use like a, a separate model. But um, yeah, thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts. Just on that on that topic, that mm -hmm. I was I was more kind of confused by the second iteration of like just picking some layer inside the network. Um, to then cluster off of I, that just seemed like really it was interesting i don't know if that's used elsewhere to like kind of iterate on putting something from a model that comes from a, the mo the same models like internal layers in a previous iteration like is is interesting i'm surprised that it works so well right and i i think um uh, one of the reasons why why it worked so well um and and like my my intuition behind this was that um because you're you're taking the representations um from like one of the intermediate layers meaning like these representations also learn while you're uh um, while you're making the second pass at the entire data set um uh, like what that eventually does um in my opinion would be that uh, since since you're anyway doing like masked speech um, representation over here so that gives like uh, another sort of signal for the context net and the feature encoder to uh, create even better representation right so because now the model knows that hey for this particular representation um you know i'm i'm i am sort of um, say 60% correct um just 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 making this up right now um and and then so uh, and and then the way um we sort of uh, do like when we do like another pass at it then the then these um representations from the context net uh, automatic like automatically would become better because it's like feeding off of that if that makes sense Yeah, yeah, kind of, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't remember exactly. It seemed, it seemed that like the way that they picked that layer was that it was highly correlated with, um, it, maybe not correlated, but they, they had some other metric of like similarity with mm -hmm. um, the like uh, actual um, names or or text that they were trying to like the labels that they had for a segment of the data set is that right the, yeah they tried to pick like the out the layer that was most correlated with that text uh right uh, labeling and that and that makes sense feels a little ch like cheating i guess but yeah. it yeah it seems reasonable to to do that and then and then like you said like it learns even better representations from trying to predict that representation and uh, right but i i yeah I do agree. That's that's kind of like a meta move, uh, <laughs> literally, uh, from them. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, perfect. Um, so just um, I'm just gonna quickly just um, ask anyone else if 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 anyone else wants to share their thoughts on the whole discovery of um, hidden units through clustering. And um, if you don't want to um, unmute yourself, you can also just like go to the ML for audio study group and just put on put down your question as well. I can um, read it um, over there out loud for for everyone as well. <clears throat> uh, 
perfect um let's um let's go like one step further uh, into like discovering these um hidden units so um like this is essentially like what was happening in the in the picture before so so like the first step is to extract these like hidden uh, units from the raw waveform um of the audio itself right then we have the k-means um clustering algorithm which then takes each segment and you know um assigns it to like one of these uh, one of the k clusters right um and then we um uh, for, for for like each identified cluster like each cluster essentially becomes like a hidden unit right and um all the audio waveforms within a cluster um become part of that hidden unit right um and then like each hidden unit um within the cluster um sorry each hidden unit which is like one cluster is then mapped to like another corresponding embedding vector right and uh, this embedding vector is then used for um for the masked uh, language modeling process right um so we essentially go from like waveform like full full fledged waveform to 25 millisecond chunks from 25 millisecond chunks to which cluster they belong to and from cluster to um um another learned embedding of that particular cluster right and uh, then from there we um like make predictions <clears throat> and um, once so so once this this um once we have these like hidden units let's talk about like how do we actually um learn from the um uh, like like what's like let's look at the overall prediction step or, or or the learning phase of this right so we have um um from the context net we have um we have these randomly sorry from the latent feature encoder we have these randomly masked um um representations these then like go through the the context um network right and then they're they're sort of projected to be at the same um uh, to be for of to be at the same uh, same dimension as the uh, embeddings from the clustering step right and then um, you know uh, we essentially uh, compute like cosine similarity between the transformer output and the hidden unit embedding um, to then like um, you know uh, find like which which particular unit um, should it be Right, so it's basically simple cosine similarity between um, all the hidden units from the clustering step to uh, to like whatever is the projection after the final projection step, um, and um, um, based on that, they use like cross entropy loss um, to then penalize wrong predictions, and uh, the loss is only applied to the masked position. This is kind of important um, as uh, and the authors actually in like in uh, within the paper they they also show like different um experiments with this so say for example like like uh, the first uh, ex experiment they uh, tried was to calculate the loss on on all the um outputs from the context network so masked or unmasked doesn't really matter they uh, calculate um the loss for for all of them then they just did it for masked just did it for like uh, unmasked and um, they found that that um, just calculating the loss on the mass positions um, gave the best results um, and so on um, and my explanation or, or, or like my uh, intuition behind um, or, or like my understanding of that was that this forces the model to create um, even better you know unmasked um, representations so that um, we're more closer to finding the um the mask units um so i know i said a lot right now i'm just gonna take a quick step back and see if we have any um uh thoughts comments on this Perfect. Um, so let's let's move forward and let's see 
um, what happens um, next, right? So now um, we, we've, so just a quick recap, what we've um, seen so far is that um, one, Hubert pretty much utilizes the same um, sort of um, architecture as Wave 2, Wave 2. Um, and the thing that's that, that that's kind of changed over here is the is the pre-training objective. So um, um, in case of Hubert, we have like a clustering step, whereas in case of Wave 2, Wave 2, we had um, some sort of a quantization step, right? And even like if you uh, compare the loss functions between the um, Wave to Wave Two architecture and Hubert architecture, uh, then um, the the Hubert loss is significantly uh, more simplified. Um, wave to Wave Two use uses like a combination of uh, diversity loss and uh, contrastive loss, um, and uh, you know uh, that's just a little too complicated. Whereas um, Hubert essentially just uses a very simple cross entropy loss uh, only on masked positions, um, and uh, um, they basically do like two iterations for like clustering. So, so the first one, first iteration is done using the MFCC features, and the second iteration is done um, through the uh, transformer um, embeddings uh, from the model itself. Um, I think uh, if anyone's really interested in like which uh, which particular layer they use, so for the base Hubert model, they use the sixth layer of the uh, of the um, um, feature um, encoder, if I'm not wrong, and for the for the for the larger ones, they use the ninth layer, and um, they also did like an analysis, as I think someone mentioned before, uh, about um, you know which layer um, gives the best possible um, uh, results, right? And 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 that's 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 pretty much it, right? So the model effectively like learns these units and um, um, uh, they pre-trained it on 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 libre speech 960r uh, like the full data set and um, uh, then they sort of tried this out for um, uh, for different fine tuning tasks um, for different downstream tasks sorry um, and um, now that we've spoken about like pre-training uh, and like the training overall, let's talk about like fine tuning of this. So the fine tuning is also pretty much the same as like wave to wave two. Um, so they um, they take the convolutional waveform audio encoder, and um, you know those parameters are fixed. Um, similar to wave to wave two point they have like a free step hyperparameter which which essentially freezes the um, the audio encoder for like certain number of steps. So this could be um, uh, I don't know, like um, one epoch of your, like however number of steps that you have for like one epoch and so on and so forth. I, I didn't have like any specific um, um, reasoning uh, or, or, or like any specific table about like what should be the um, the number here. And, uh, you know, then you essentially train the softmax matrix um, with like CTC loss for ASR um, and, uh, like any other downstream task that you may have. So for example, you, you can do like spoken language understanding, which is um, classification or like audio classification and, you know, audio regression and so on and so forth. Um, pretty much anything with the train network then. Um, so pretty much the same as wave to wave 2.0. Um, I'm gonna quickly like um, zoom through the, zoom through the the resources and then we, we, we can take a quick um, discussion break and, and 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 see like um what thoughts everyone has um on it um so um i think one of the things which i re really like doing especially when i uh, read um like asr specific papers uh, is to like look at the results on like uh, on on like low resource meaning that when you just give them uh, give the model very few, you know very few data points and and expect it to sort of learn so um uh, the first one is the is a 10 minute subset of the Libre speech data set. Um, so you can see that um, Hubert um, essentially like outperforms um, wave to wave 2 in pretty much um, all the cases um, from what I can see. And um, they tried with both a transformer language model to um, to decode as well as just a 4RAM model um, as well. Um, 
within like one hour you can you can also see like considerable difference between uh, i'm just comparing wave to wave 2.0 large and um, q vertex large um so this is 2.6 um this is 4.8 this is 5.8 i think another thing um to mention here is that um uh, that Hubert X large is like a billion parameter model, um, whereas I think it's 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 a bigger model than Wave to Wave 2.0 large. I'm not 100% sure on that. If anyone remembers that, then uh, please feel free to chime in and and uh, um, tell us about that. Um, but yeah. Um, Yes, I think you're right. Uh, wave to wave large is three nine uh, three hundred fifty million parameters. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Over large right. is one billion. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, so 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 then like Hubert X large is not a fair comparison with uh, wave to wave two point zero large. Then, um, yeah. So if we if we compare just wave to wave two point zero large with Hubert large uh, transformer, then um, I mean. There is some uh, benefit for sure, like 2.6, 4.9, 2.9, um, and we're, we're comparing. Sorry, we're comparing with this one, so 2.9, and uh, you know, 5.8, 5.4. So not that much, uh, you know, improvement, but it's definitely an improvement, and also like a significantly simpler uh, training objective, right? So um, meaning that you can quite easily. Uh, uh, go through and like create a hubert model for uh, or like pre-train a hubert model as opposed to you know when it comes to like a wave to wave 2.0 model wherein you have to like be really really um, um cautious about like what kind of parameters you're you're pre-training it on um similarly if you look at 10 r um label data so for like hubert large um that's 2.2 4.3 2.4 4.6 um, whereas over here, 2.4, 4.8, uh, 2.6, and 4.9. So um, again, um, slightly better than wave to wave 2.0, and um, the same the same thing for like 100R um, label data as well. Um, for like the full 960R um, uh, data set, we can see that um, uh, Hubert Large is is essentially at 1.5, 3.0. Um, 1.9 and 3.3, um, whereas wave to wake 2.0 large is something at 1.6, 3.0, uh, 1.8. Um, this is actually lower than uh, Hubert large and 3.3. So um, when you have like enough data, then then both the well, when you give it like as much data as possible, then then both the models kind of perform the same. Um, so I'm gonna take now like a quick pause and and and, and see if we have any um, thoughts comments feedback on this I have a thought about, or just a question about, um, going back to maybe a little bit what we were talking about with, with the input features, mm -hmm. um, model, like using MFCC. I'm not super familiar with that. I don't know if anyone here has more of an audio background and wants to comment on like, why that would be a useful thing to learn from, um, as opposed to, you know, like regular spectrogram output or, uh, I don't know. What, what other else there is out there to, to like learn from, but um, why why that? I don't, I'm not sure if they commented on that on, in the paper. Great, just just want to check if, if anyone wants to take that. <clears throat> yes, I think the benefit of uh, MFCCs is that uh, the frequency is on a perceivable scale. Right, so uh, when you have the normal spectrogram, a pass spectrogram, the frequencies are, uh, uh, I mean, in hertz, okay, and that is not in a perceivable scale. Like, uh, they, the features do not make sense visually uh, to you, and uh, so the way humans perceive frequencies on the log scale rather than the pitch scale, right? So that is why uh, 
uh, there is another scale called Mel scale. So there is a conversion uh, that goes from the normal frequency scale to the Mel scale. So there is a whole process for that. The advantage for that is in the Mel scale, uh, the difference between the two frequencies, uh, uh, let's say if you have, if you're considering a normal scale, okay, and uh, the difference at the higher frequencies will actually uh, appear more to you than the lower frequency. So let's say if you have something at 18 kilohertz and 19 kilohertz, right? And then you have something at 6 kilohertz and 7 kilohertz. So the difference between both the ranges is 1 kilohertz. But the sound will, uh, I mean, the sound will be very, very uh, different to you. The features would be very, very different to you. Uh, even the difference between both the ranges is just 1 kilohertz. But in the Mel scale, this is not the case. Uh, I mean, uh, the difference between any uh, two uh, scales, uh, you'll see that it will have a constant uh, spectrogram or constant energy, the, the rare affections and uh, compressions that we say on the spectrogram. So uh, that is a more perceivable scale, in my opinion. I think uh, if I'm not confused, you won't. So. So you make sense. So, so the idea is to kind of focus the features from the audio based on what uh, human hearing and, and the audible range is. Yes, absolutely. And we are just changing the scale of the frequency here uh, to a more perceivable okay. scale, which makes more sense to actually visualize the features and understand the spread. So even if you want to actually understand the spectrum visually, right? If you have a sentence, then you can actually go ahead and do that uh, by just uh, uh, plotting it on a scale and you can see the rate affection and the compressions in the sound and understand that how different syllables are pronounced. I see. So, so if we were to use this architecture for a different audio task, like say bird song recognition or something like that, you know, <laughs> there wasn't like audio from human or um, I don't know, like uh, so, some other audio task involving some other kinds of sounds. It, it might not make sense to focus using MFCC to scale it based on human perception and rather like ever domain yes, we're, uh, we're using. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, because uh, the uh, I think the bird frequency is at a much higher scale than what a human can perceive, right? So I think our maximum hearing uh, range is twenty kilohertz, while the birds uh, have the uh, is uh, I think in the range of forty-four kilohertz uh, to fifty kilohertz, right? So then it doesn't make sense to actually bring down into the spectrum. But still, uh, I think those techniques still work. Uh, but they would not work as efficiently as you uh, as you can work on the raw signal, right? Like wave to wave doesn't convert the raw audio into spectrograms. It works on the raw signal, right? So, so if you have a uh, if you're trying to do a bird classification or a bird identification, then I think working on the raw signal uh, makes much more sense uh, because you do not want to lose more information by plotting it on a spectrogram scale. That makes sense. And then what, what about using MEL scale spectrograms as opposed to MFCC features? Like, what's the reasoning there? Is it just, I guess, fewer numbers? Yes, absolutely. So MEL scale is one thing, and MFCC is just the discrete cosine uh, uh, transformations of the MEL scale, basically. So you have, I think, 13, uh, 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 13 levels in the MEL scale level one, level two, level three, and uh, it can actually classify that the sound that you're trying to actually visualize, it appears in what mel scale, right? So uh, if in the case of a bird frequency, it would be in a higher mel scale, let's say, and if in, it's uh, like a whisper or something, it would be on a lower mel scale. So, so it's all about the visualization, like how the humans perceive the frequency and or the pitch, basically. Right, and, and just, to, just to add on, <clears throat> sorry um about the um whole mscc thing so um um uh, like I, I think um one of the key things over here is that the way that we hear things or that the way we we perceive things is um because of these like really infinitesimally small like hairs on our on our ear um right and like those 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 hair are kind of like equally spaced and that's the reason why like mel uh, filter bank um works so mel filter, ba filter bank uh, is um like it it takes um 
um, like the whole like linear, um, um, you know, um, linear sort of audio form and um, the whole MFCC process um, sort of takes the continuous input and like uh, gives you a discrete representation of it, right? Because you can't really process like continuous uh, waveform um, generally, right? So it, it gives you a discrete representation of that. And uh, uh, since it is um, really close to how we perceive audio, we meaning humans, um, uh, it is like really useful for uh, speech recognition or like spoken language understanding tasks um, and so on and so forth. So in most cases, like uh, up until like up before the the whole like transformer revolution, uh, you would you would pretty much just use the the MFCC representations. Like in fact, right now as well directly uh, and and you know train some sort of a DNN uh, on those representations um, for your um, downstream tasks uh, as well. Um, so just wanted to highlight that. Cool. Well, yeah, that was that was going to be my other question about just like has there been work on just instead of trying to learn good representations like from MFCC, can you just use MFCC and then learn something on top of that? But I guess that's more of a, a classical approach. Of right. Creating. Yeah, I get it. And, and you lose things from the signal as opposed to this approach, which in the end just takes the raw audio and doesn't use any kind of um, spectrogram analysis before goes into the uh, the convolutional layer to extract features, which yeah. seems like it could extract much richer, richer features for the task. Yeah, I think I think one of the most uh, more important things over here is that like MFCC representation in its in itself is like very um, like especially non normalized ones are like very um, prone to um, get swayed away if I may call it uh, by noise, right? So like if if there's like noise in your audio signal, then like MFCC representations would 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 not be as effective as like a clear um, audio's MFCC um, representation. Um, and uh, uh, you know when you use when you directly model audio waveforms, then um, you would you would assume or or like you would hope rather um, I'm just using the word hope here that through your uh, feature encoder like through the convolutions the model learns to sort of avoid or like distinguish between noise and signal right um, so you're you're like learning how you understand the signal in itself as well in that case whereas in like MFCC though the representation the learning the representation part remains like static right um, which is mathematical so yeah. See, makes sense. Yes. So, uh, just to add to what Web have said, so uh, in um, uh, in any kind of smell spectrogram, you actually lose some information, right? Because you're trying to, let's say, if you have uh, the audio sample rate is like sixteen thousand hertz, right? So it means you have sixteen thousand sample uh, samples in a second, right? And if you go from that point to a spectrogram, you lose a lot of energy. So and uh, you lose a lot of information. Uh, I mean, uh, not information, but a lot of certain things that can be useful for the model, right? It would be tougher to train the uh, model on the original signal uh, because there are more samples in the original signal. But in the end, it would uh, it is expected to perform much better on the original one if you uh, train it in a better way. But in the past, uh, as we discussed, like in end-to-end -end architectures as well, like in deep speech as well, which was a CRNN type of architecture, we actually converted the raw audio to a spectrogram. And then uh, the spectrogram was fed to convolutional layers. And then you had a LSTM or RNN on top of that to do the speech recognition task. Bang on, um, perfect. Um, so there's there's a there's a question in the chat. Um, maybe we can spend like a minute discussing that. Um, what are the advantages of Hubert over wave to wick um, if both have almost the same performance? So I'm going to take a quick stab at it, and and um, um, you know feel free to unmute yourself to discuss this further. Um, I think like one of the major reasons why um, uh, someone would prefer to use say Hubert over Wave2Wave2 is is uh, 
specifically for like from scratch like when you're dealing with from scratch training right so like when you're say for example dealing with a new language altogether um and uh, you're like you're like training from um from scratch then you know um the whole like pre-training process within um uh hubert is significantly more simpler um as compared to um you know all the billion things that you have to take care of in a wave to wave 2.0 and um i have like limited experience like uh, pre-training wave to wave 2.0 it was um at least in like the six seven times that i tried to do that it was just not performing that well so um there's it, it's just way too sensitive to the to the hyperparameters um and uh, um, whilst i haven't uh, tried with with hubert um so far it it's just the entire approach looks significantly more um simpler when compared to wave to wave 2.0 um that was my quick thought um i'm curious to see if if anyone else has any thoughts on this um yes so uh, uh sorry i'm speaking too too much uh, oh, no, but no, no. i just want to it's yeah. all good uh, yeah so just want to share i mean when you uh, when you actually reading the hubert paper and the wave 2 wave 2 paper they are actually comparing the results on the speech recognition task right and seeing results you might say that hubert is good but uh, nobody uses i mean i am not seeing anybody uh, using hubert in the production system or something so that is first thing but that's for the speech recognition for other tasks like uh, speech separation speaker clustering or let's say speaker identification hubert tends to perform much better than web to web in those tasks i mean this is my personal uh, uh, finding right so basically if you have a uh, if you're doing a speaker clustering task or something right? then as compared to web to web hubert performs much better uh, even but even on speech recognition it performs better but what we found out that uh it was not very uh, better in terms of when you have different speakers i mean all together different dialects uh, than the training data right so i just want to give you an example like in uh, india there are like uh, different regions right so if you have collected data, data from the north if you have collected data from the north region and then you're trying your model out on a person who has a south indian accent right then hubert doesn't tend to perform much better in that case uh, we don't know what is the reason maybe the reason is uh, somewhere the information is lost or something but wave to wave adapts more to dialects and noise uh, in the speech recognition but for speaker clustering uh, source separation and speech separation for other task hubert performs much much better than wave to wave but i think just just the um, that was actually a brilliant point and uh, um i'm not sure if um, we have seen this here um, but there's this um like um once the the author sort of looked through the um the output of um or like how how accurate the speech uh, units um were within uh, oh, is there someone who wants to say something Never mind. Um, yeah, once they looked at the um, the um, the overall like sp spoken language units like um, learned by the model, um, they were actually able to create um, like a generative model uh, at the end. Uh, let me see if I can find the link to it. Um, was it this one? So that's um, so. Uh, that basically paves way for like textless nlp um and um uh, sorry this is this is still like loading um but um but the but the but the idea here is that since the since the uh, hubert model like essentially learns um how um the waveform in itself or like speech in itself is um is is created or like what it's made up of um you can you you can use it as a generative model in, in you know and you don't need like any any sort of um um text for it and um this is like um another like uh, active area um of research 
that I think they've been focusing on uh, quite a lot um, of late. So you can like directly just use um, the, the the representations from um, from the model. So uh, just to like um, uh, double down on like Harveen's point, um, these uh, like these representations in itself are like really really um, good. Right when 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 compared to say wave two wave two so these like inner representations are are fantastic so that's why they they perform quite well on like spoken language understanding tasks and um, so on and so forth just wanted to quickly point that out. Perfect. Um, so maybe we 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 quickly head over to like the conclusion, and then we can um, you know spend the last fifteen minutes um, having some sort of a discussion um, about the overall paper. And you know, if anyone has any questions, we can take those as well. Um, um, by the way, thank you for sticking on for so long. I know it's been like an hour uh, since we've been talking. Um, but cool. So um, in the end, like um, the paper presents like a really fantastic. Um, way and like a simplified way of like learning the um the individual units um that constitute um or, you know speech uh, using like k-means um and uh, you know they also learned that um uh, you know iterating through these like cluster assignments um through like um already learned data representations also helps so this is pointing to the fact that uh, after the first iteration of k-means um the clustering algorithm um effectively takes the um, the representation from the previously learned model right so the, so the sixth layer of the um, uh, of the model um, and uh, they also uh, were able to scale Hubert quite quite a lot so they were able to scale Hubert to like a 1 billion uh, parameter transformer model as opposed to like in case of wave 2 wave 2 they were only able to scale it up to uh, 390 million uh, parameters if I'm um, not wrong and um, uh, it just means that like the the potential to um, to learn or, or or like the potential for like bigger models using Hubert um, is much higher um, as compared to the other one, right? Um, and and like in the end, um, they found that the that the representations are were of like really high quality, and uh, you know uh, that's why like Hubert uh, in itself can be used for like downstream tasks beyond just recognition and can be used for like generation tasks can be used for like understanding tasks and so on and so forth um, as well so just a um, quick thing if you're if if, if if you found hubert to be like really interesting you can you can of course try out like um the, the, there are i think as of this morning there were roughly about 120 hubert models for different languages as well as like all the uh, X large, large uh, base um, models that um, small and base models that that the authors released are on the Hugging Face Hub. So you can, of course, just go over there, uh, try out a quick pipeline to see um, how Hubert works, and you know you can also pit a Hubert model against a Wave2Wave2 model for certain um, complex um, uh, synthesis or just like classification tasks to see how well it does. Um, I've linked this, and the the um, presentation is linked in the um, ML for Audio Study Group channel as well. Um, perfect. Which this now brings us to the end of the act, 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 you know paper reading per se. Um, I think it's it's a good time to open um, the overall channel for discussions and you know questions if we have any. So I think um, maybe I'll I'll just put a question up for um, for discussion, and um, I, I, this was something which was like bugging me when I was uh, reading the paper. Um, was that there's like so if you look at like um, wave two wave two, there is an XLSR model which 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 which, which was sort of pre-trained on like multiple languages and like so on and so forth, uh, but there wasn't like there 
at least to my knowledge there isn't any like multilingual hubert model so i was just like wondering um if this is something if if one anyone has has heard of um a multilingual hubert model and two if uh, if not then what might be the reasons for a multilingual a multilingual hubert model not existing Maybe they were saving it for the next paper. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'd, I'd also be curious. I don't know why, but that's interesting. Yeah, it was just um, it just didn't uh, make sense to me. I'm actually also not sure like how the pre-training worked for like multiple languages in uh, XLSR model. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not sure if 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 it was done like iteratively. Uh, language by language, or it was just like mishmash all languages, and you learned like all the hidden representations uh, in one go. Um, so I'm not sure if 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 anyone remembers from XLSR paper, then feel free to chime in. No, it's uh, I think it's actually all the languages in one go. Right. What they try to do is that in a batch they try to include all the languages mm -hmm. in in one batch, uh, sorry, in one batch, I mean, one utterance of all the language. The only, I think the condition is that if you're uh, feeding just a one, uh, uh, what do you say, one audio chunk, right? So that has to be in one particular language. So it cannot be in multiple uh, languages. But again, I mean, it's quite flexible, OK? So we have done, like, uh, at my work, we have done, like, pre-training for 23 Indic languages using 10,000 hours of data, right? And uh, we didn't try all of these things like to keep all the languages in one batch or so. But at the end of the day, we get a good model uh, with improved accuracy on the Indic languages and so. So it's basically you just collect a bunch of data and then just give it to the model and let it figure it out uh, on its own. Right. I think that 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 might actually be the reason, right? So um, what's what's happening in the wave to wake 2 model is that you you have this entire quantization matrix which is which is a learned parameter so to speak right um right whereas in the case of uh you, you know hubert um like there is no like quantization matrix right there is just like a mm. k-means clustering uh, mm. uh thing uh well algorithm not thing <laughs> And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming, like when you when when you have like multiple uh, languages, one your number of hidden units increase um, because when mm -hmm. you have more um, units now, uh, more possible units. Mm -hmm. um, so one that, mm -hmm. and um, I'm I'm just not sure like um, if it will scale well for like you know languages which are similar sounding. Um, so. So you know, like especially in case of say, for example, Indic languages, they can be like mm -hmm. really similar in the way that um, certain things are pronounced or like certain units are pronounced, and they might like club into mm -hmm. like a single unit, and that might just like confuse the model further because like the clustering mm -hmm. part is not really learned, so to speak, right? Um, the yes. the representation is learned. Um, so maybe like, I'm I'm just like throwing out ideas right now. Yes. Uh, so I think the quantization module in wave 2 vec is just a similar thing uh, that we have as word vectors in NLP, right. Right? right? So it's kind of a similar thing, right? So if you have a uh, sound, so basically computer doesn't understand language, right? It's our human brain that actually understands that English is different than Hindi, right? So maybe they're trying to say, uh, th uh, say like if a word or a synonym or let's say phoneme, is uh, accompanied by this uh, starting phoneme and ending phoneme, then maybe this is the word vector for that. So like in the case, it happens exactly in the case in HMMs, right? So you have a, uh, something in the starting of phoneme and the ending of the phoneme, and then you figure it out. Uh, this phoneme belongs to which cluster, right? And uh, on the clustering part, uh, when we actually fed all the languages to the wave to vector model, and uh, there is an option to actually uh, 
find the embeddings mm -hmm. uh, from the model and then using a tsne or something plot those embeddings to see like which languages are close to each other right and as you rightly said i think the south indian languages were really close to each other then hindi punjabi and sanskrit were really close to each other right so which said that if you want to create a good model for hindi right then in the pre training step you can include languages uh, of that of audio of maybe hindi punjabi and sanskrit so maybe you can train one model for one cluster for better uh, speech representations right like create one uh, separate pre trained model for the only the south indian languages like tamil telugu kannada right right and then only for the north indian languages like hindi punjabi and sanskrit right so yes that is surely going to improve but uh, uh, this analysis that we did uh, was just uh, when we fed all the 23 languages in one go and then we realized that if you need to create better representations then oh. maybe pick clusters from here and do uh, do a cluster wise training a pre training basically right right i think also like this might um also tie into to the fact that this 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 may just be why like you don't see like hubert that much out there in in production because um you 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 would like it's it's not as if um it's not as simpler as 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 say just like we have to wait to wherein everything's being learned um on the fly um you 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 actually need quite a lot of data for um for the model especially for like asr um, you know specific tasks the model needs to sort of learn um um you know um those units so so especially for like low resource languages um it might just not be that um scalable then uh, and and you know that's why we don't see it um, that much out in the wild yes yes so uh, so i actually visualize this thing as like uh the output of the transformer right mm -hmm. in the case of nlp the output of the transformer has to be one of the characters from the vocabulary mm -hmm. right which is limited right right so but sound doesn't have any vocabulary right so it builds the vocabulary on the fly so what is the vocabulary the quantization code books are the vocabulary basically Correct. so i visualize it like th this way right so the vocabulary is built on the fly based on what input do you give to the model right no that's that's actually brilliant and and um and also like in 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 case of wave 2 wave 2 these these code books are learned so these these code yeah. books are nothing but like represent like are just like matrices right um yeah. I, i i i think that's um that actually might sum up why there is no multilingual um hubert Hmm. Yeah, but we need to find a concrete answer for that. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I think it might be worth tweeting this out after this. Um, yes. to see if anyone has any questions. Nice. Um. So, um, I'm just gonna uh, maybe like we use the last nine minutes to see if 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 anyone ha else has any other discussion points or like questions that they want to um, discuss. Um, otherwise, we can call it a day. I have a little question. If you, if sure. You, like concerning, yeah, concerning the uh, the uh, the hardware. I, uh, sorry, I wasn't uh, able to join you in the beginning, so I wasn't. Uh, I haven't seen all the, your explanation about Hubert, but what do you think about uh, like uh, performance in the uh, in the uh, uh, hardware perspective uh, of uh, of Hubert against Wave to Vic? For example, if you have a constraint of of uh, of uh, hardware, like for example, if we just want to use CPU or or uh, or like maybe we just want to use JSONs or something like that with a, a limited amount of power. what do you think uh, like uh, the difference between hubert and wave to like but i can i can i can take a quick stab at it so if you um and maybe i can just um open this right now right so if you just look at the um at least on like hugging face if you just look at the um the code base for uh, hubert um on transformers um library it's pretty much exactly the same as uh, wave to wake right um the only thing that changes is like what 
what model you're um, um, essentially um, um, sort of using at the end of the day, so to speak, right? So uh, in terms of, I think in terms of just like sheer say inference, I, I think the performance would be pretty much the same uh, for like for like Hubert all the way up to like large model so and 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 i'm just talking about like inference time right now uh for like resource constrained environments i think it should be same because um um the overall network is pretty much the same minus the pre-training step right which doesn't really matter that much for inference um so to speak right um um whereas when it comes to say for example training um i i i think you would um it's it's safe to assume that um, while training, um, wave to wave 2.0 model would take, um, you know, longer because it's it's sort of learning um, everything in itself um, as compared to say a Hubert model, right? Uh, in purely in terms of like training time, when you compare like um, you know the same hardware or like the same um, uh, uh, setup. Um, so um, those two are the things which which I think. Uh, might be relevant here um but i i maybe we just open this up to everyone who's on here and if they have any thoughts on this yeah okay for your thank you for your explanation Right, and and this is what I was. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see my screen with, um, yes, the, I can see. the code base. Like, like a lot of stuff is just like inherently like taken from Wave Two Wave Two model. So, and in fact, in their paper as well, they just mentioned that they they take the same sort of feature encoder, the same sort of context network, um, and and then like the only thing that changes is the sort of clustering step um, over there. Does hugging face um, show inference performance statistics like uh, about models um, and the hosted models in particular? I guess like I think, when they're executed, I think there's much, like memory or cost. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not sure if if there is um, anything um, exactly like specific to. Um, um, you know, um, finding like how accurate or, or like how much time does the model take? But I think just just from like finding how much inference time a model would take is is that you can just like record from the um, browser. Let me just quickly see. Um, hello. And if I compute, then I think it it gives you like some sort of like seconds taken or like um, time taken to. Um, uh, to infer, so that might be the only thing that that I think Hugging Face provides at the moment. Yeah, at least on the on the model cards. Oh, okay, cool. It'd be it'd be kind of interesting to have that in model cards. I don't know feature right. request here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if if. Homer's on the call here, uh, but I would let him know for sure. Yeah, actually, the speech recognition is good, but to train models, you need a, a lot of hardware, right? I, both in case of Wave 2, Wave 2, and uh, Hubert, right? right? And even the Hubert paper, they mentioned that they're using 32 GPUs to train it, uh, basically. And, but Hubert uh, trains faster than Wave 2, Wave 2. I mean, what? From the official paper that they have uh, published, right? And uh, like they're using, uh, I think, 256 GPUs for the Hubert XL, XL large, right? And I don't think we can ever afford to have this kind of uh, stuff here with us for the pre training and all, right? So uh, the speech pre training is kind of pretty, pretty expensive. Right. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I... I do agree with you um, on that, um, and 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 uh, I mean, um, uh, it would have been like really cool if like um, you know we had like Hubert-like sort of um, multilingual models. Um, 
precisely for the same reason because then you can like even like well fine tuning would pretty much be still the same uh, as like wave 2 wave 2 um but mm. um you know um specifically for like from scratch training for like low resource languages like um you know one of the like main demerits that 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 this particular model has in my eyes is that it can pretty much never be used for like um you know low resource languages um mm -hmm. at all right um i know mm -hmm. i i started off with something and like ended with something but uh, i just wanted to mm -hmm. sort of have that out that you know like like um irrespective of how simpler the model is um it's it's just it's, it's just something that that requires it, it, you know a lot of data for it to work um well uh, unless of course like someone tries to figure out the whole um you know clustering step and like augments that with like some other um you know like a wave to wave to uh, isk model uh to mm -hmm. sort of create those like units um and so on but um i'm assuming that will just become even more complicated as we <laughs> go further but yeah 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 <laughs> great um i think i think this was um this was fantastic um and just in like interest of time um i i think we should we should call it a day now but if 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 anyone has any other questions uh, feel free to drop by um ml for audio study group channel and you know put your questions there um and you know um we'll 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 make sure to get those answered um as soon as possible um and you know Thank you so much for joining us. This was a lovely discussion, in my opinion. And I will also share the slides again uh, and push those on the GitHub repo that we have. Um, thank you so much. And um, hopefully, we'll catch up in a couple of weeks for another paper. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right.